Thanks for joining us on Sunrise. Well, Peter Hayward is the CEO of uh, Hayward's Grand Safaris Events and Expeditions. He's a businessman that is leading the way in eco-friendly tourism and sustainability education. And with more than 7 million tourists visiting our country in 2010 alone, it's essential to make sure we take good care of our country. Well, thank you, Peter, for joining us. It's a pleasure. I th it, it is essential to look after our country, and everything is going green nowadays. So, so should tourism. Tourism has to lead the way. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Tell us what eco friendly tourism entails. Well, um, it can get quite uh, misused. Everything's <laughs> become very eco friendly now, or sustainable, or as you've heard, carbon footprint friendly. Uh, you're getting measured on all these things nowadays. But, in, you know, yes, on the one hand, there are tourists that pop into the country and are becoming more and more excited about really getting to grips with rural areas, getting into the back yard, so to speak, you know. Mm. They don't particularly want to fly 12,000 kilometers uh, to stay in a hotel that's similar to something in New York. Mm. You know, you want to go to a country, you want to, if you go to Italy, you want to meet Italians. Yeah. You want to come to Africa, you want to meet Africans. So, eco-friendly tourism is about getting people into environments that are in themselves flagships for ecotourism. In other words, they look after the environment, they, uh, they keep it um, in check, um, it's not being misused and abused. Uh, that would be the obvious route. Uh, in terms of our organization, Haywards, we like to take that into the corporate arena and into VIP areas where we can get your, VIPs. Your, your, your customers are predominantly corporate clients. And uh, you have um, a number of uh, VIP tours, I believe, as well, or high-profile tours as well. Yeah, Haywards does special events. So we take people under the special events banner on big expeditions. So we can take up to 100 to 200 guests um, in a tented camp mobile type scenario right into that backyard. And we act as a little bit of a bridge between the urban world and the rural world. Um, it's always funny, you know, the urban people are under the impression the guys in the rural area need all the help. Yeah. There's always fundraising going on for them. Uh, you know, if you get onto news, for instance, you'll see that urban areas are always under pressure. For instance, like Somalia right now. But in fact, it's the, um, it's the urban areas that are the ones that are having the trouble, not the rural and we should be learning from those guys in the rural areas. That's, yeah. that's, that's what you're saying. Correct. So we could get, uh, and we do, we take a lot of leaders, uh, you know, industry tycoons, people like that who want to get social responsible, who want to find out and take their top performers in their company on something way beyond a team build. And that's into their backyard. You know, corporates spend... Uh, huge amounts of money, um, for instance, on in taking their guys to Mauritius or yep. uh, New York or uh, Paris. We should be spending it locally. If you think our corporates have changed dramatically in the last 10 years, uh, we've got a situation now where a lot of our BEE, um, original BEE sort of inputs that came into South African corporates now head up big organizations. This is very unique on the planet. Um, where do you get someone who comes from a rural area running a massive international company who wears a suit during the week and gets into his tribal gear on the weekend and goes home to his his origin yeah it's incredible you don't get that in new york you mm. don't wear your suit in new york and then you know put on your indian outfit and go home for the weekend yeah. we do so our corporate uh, social responsibility programs can get big corporates through our organization into rural areas. If you take places like Venda, extremely sacred, you know, parts of Zululand, where there will never be a hotel. So you can't literally take your group there because where are you going to house them? Yeah. So we can build villages within three days. These are, these are temporary villages that yeah. you, you would build in, in the space of three days? Three days and house 240 people, wow. up to 240 people. But bring them into that culture. So it's an experience as well? It's an incredible experience. It's one of the top eco experiences on planet Earth today. Everyone, you know, right from key leaders, opinion leaders, celebrities. I mean, Oprah, for instance, you know, that's one of her big spearheads is getting into rural areas. As you know, she did that big expedition through southern Africa mm. four years ago. 
um, it's high on the priority list. But people want to get their hands dirty. You know, there's one thing for a South African sitting on the back of a Land Rover looking at rhino or elephant. It's fantastic. Yeah. But it's very exciting getting into village, learning how to make pottery, getting into the culture of beadwork, finding out how that village actually survives with nothing. Yeah. And that's where rural villages can now teach urban people how to make it without massive uh, electricity usage, uh, you know, huge amounts of carbon yeah. exposure. So it's a very exciting... South Africa is going to become, I think, one of the... Uh, the leaders in the world in terms of eco-friendly, sustainable tourism as we see it unfold. Well, how does the average person get involved? I mean, if, if your clients are predominantly corporate clients, how does a person or viewer out there sitting and saying, well, I'd like to do this instead of saving up and going to Mauritius or going to New York or wherever it is, I'd like to get involved in eco-friendly tourism. What avenues are available for them? There are... You know, South Africa is so rich. It's almost one of our problems. We, we have got so many fantastic tourism products. Um, some of these little lodges that are out there doing incredible work with, with their, their local in, indigenous populations, the rural villages, the royal families, for instance. There is amazing stuff happening um, and incredibly good value for money. I mean, some of these lodges, you're getting, you know, a five-star treatment for under six, seven hundred rand a night, all your food, your entertainment, everything in. Um, by world standards, uh, you know, you can't get a bad B, uh, B and B in Europe for 40 euro anymore. True. It's, you just can't get it. But South Africa still, although we're being told that we're very expensive and our product's expensive, you know, I believe that needs to be investigated a little bit more. It's not true. We... Uh, are incredibly good value for money. I mean, it's, it's amazing what you can. So the average, let's say, family group can easily access, uh, get into, you know, places like the Transkei, yeah. the Wild Coast, uh, Namaqualand, um, the West Coast, uh, Limpopo province, mm. by visiting these small lodges. The problem with big groups and corporates who hold the key to the finance, they do have social responsibility programs, they do have money they would like to spend. The question begs to be asked, how do we spend it without having to increase the budget of our, our spend that's being planned, but how do we spend it in such a way that we can involve the company, Yeah. you know, the decision makers in the corporate? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, Peter, we have uh, run out of time. So sorry to interrupt you there. Um, we're chatting to CEO of Howard, uh, Hayward's rather, Grand Safaris Events and Expeditions. For more information on what we've been chatting about, you can contact reservations at secluded.co.za. It should be at the bottom of your screen. We'll be back after this short break. Do stay with us.